Okay, so let's move on to um, a new section, which will be section 1.4, which is going to be where we start finally doing some uh, some actual number theory, playing with some numbers. This section is called algebraic numbers. Um, and number fields, which if you may remember, was the title of this chapter. So we're finally going to define these, these things. Um, so as usual, I'm going to start with a definition. So definition 1.4.1 what's this up well what's an algebraic number um an algebraic number um, is a complex number um which satisfies um well which is algebraic over q it's a complex number which is algebraic over the rational number, over Q, meaning, so what does this mean? Meaning, um, it is a root of a polynomial in Q of X. So this is what an algebraic uh, number is. Um, later on, we're gonna study something a bit more refined, which are algebraic integers, um, but for now, these will just this is what an algebraic number is. Um, I'm going to do some update of, to our notation. Notation. Um, alpha is an algebraic number. Algebraic number. Um, then we saw before that this has a new polynomial. Then has a min pole um, denoted we were calling m alpha we were calling m alpha q because at this time at this moment we we're talking about algebraic numbers which are numbers which are algebraic over over q so we have this new polynomial um, but because we're most of the time we're going to be working over q um, i'm going to just drop the q from the notation um, and I'll, I'll only put it in if we need it but um, just i'll take for simplicity uh, We'll write this as it says m alpha. So I'm just gonna if I don't put uh, what the number uh, what the field is, and you can assume that this is q, or that I've made a mistake. But no, it should just be q. Um, just because yeah, most of the time we're just gonna be working with this, so it's sort of annoying to have to write um, m alpha q all the time. So here's a um. Here's a definition. Um, oh, what was this? 1.4.3. Um, if alpha is an algebraic number and uh, m alpha it's a min pol, minimal polynomial, then the, um, the other roots of this minimal polynomial are called the conjugates. Of alpha, or including itself, alpha is conjugate to itself. The other roots, well, this is not the other, and the roots of m alpha are known as the um, conjugates of alpha. Okay, so let me give some examples of. Of some algebraic numbers. So, example, what do we have? Well, the usual uh, integers or rational numbers, you know, all work. So, for example, 0, 47, root 2, um, the third root of 126. All of these things are algebraic numbers. Um, if I take D is a square free uh, integer. What does square free mean? So this is this is a key. A lot of people get this get this bit wrong. Uh, square free doesn't mean that it's not a square. So I E 
um, if we write d equals, if you write down its prime factorization, so d equals p e1 plus p2 e2 pn en, then all the ei's are 1. So there is no prime factor that shows up in, in d uh, more than once. So you know, you know the number like 6 is fine, but 8 isn't fine. Um, so if you if you do your prime factorization, then you then then you want them all the, all the primes to show up only once. Um, in any case, uh, if you take a square free integer, then root d is algebraic, um, which we know we didn't have to take square free for this, um, but um, it's conjugate. is minus the square root of d. Um, so in this case, if I've taken a square free integer, so not four or something or like this, then uh, its conjugates will just be the other root. So d goes to minus d, for example. This is, they both satisfy x squared minus d, this polynomial. Um, we're gonna be talking about uh, field extensions that look like, take, that look like this, q root d for some square free integer d. Um, so, so I thought I'd introduce them early. Um, also a bit more, let's take a bit more abstract, more exotic. So here's, here's another algebraic number, the square root of two plus the square root of two, so the square root of two plus root two. Um, this is an algebraic number. Um, can we find its, uh, let's prove this by finding its minimal binomial. So let's prove this. Finding this min. Well, I want to make sure that this satisfies some root over um, some polynomial over q of x. So uh, there's a trick for doing these these sort of calculations. So this is what I'm, I'm going to show you. So I have alpha equals root two plus root two, like this. And then if I square both sides, I get um, so like this. This implies alpha squared equals two plus root 2, which implies that alpha squared minus 2 equals root 2, which implies that alpha squared minus 2 squared equals 2, which implies that alpha to the 4 minus 4 alpha squared plus 2 um, equals to 0. So we, I've taken my number and I've somehow written it out like this. Um, okay, therefore, alpha satisfies once you have some, some equation of this form, then you can just change alphas for x's and you, you have your minimal polynomial. So alpha satisfies um, x to the 4 minus 4x squared plus 2. So it's algebraic. Um, what's the minimal polynomial of this? So I've just found some polynomial that, satis that alpha satisfies, but we don't know that this is the minimal one. So this is what we need to check. Um, so let's check if this thing is uh, irreducible. Um, what is the minimal polynomial? Well, by Eisenstein's criteria, um, with, in this case, you take p equals two. Um, oh. A careful thing sometimes people get this. Eisenstein's criterion only works for primes so you're only allowed to say Eisenstein with for p equals you know, with, at some prime you're not allowed to do like Eisenstein at four for example that doesn't work um, you, it's key that you, the number that you look reducing mod prime by Eisenstein's criterion with p equals two uh, you check you know, so p equals two so you, you check two doesn't divide this coefficient Two divides all of these, but four doesn't divide uh, my last coefficient. So this does satisfy Eisenstein with p equals two. Uh, we see that this is um, irreducible, and moreover, here's a thing that people always forget. Moreover, it's monic. It's a 
key thing for a minimal polynomial I want it to be monic, uh, which is true because the, the first coefficient is 1, so that's fine, that's monic. Um, so this must be then. Be the, uh, the minimal polynomial. Um, what are the conjugates of alpha? Of alpha? Well, they're the other roots of this polynomial. Which, okay, if I give you this polynomial and ask you to find the other roots of this, it might be a bit tough, but we can sort of work this out from the calculation we've already done, from just working backwards. So, work our way back up here. We, we have this sort of equality. So, every time we've taken a square, we're going to take a square root and just going to add a plus or minus to it. So, uh, working backwards, we see, so for example, from here to here, so I got alpha squared minus 2 equals 2. If I move back up, now I have to put like a plus or minus 2 in front of the square root, and then I come back up and I have to put another plus or minus 2 in front of the square root. Um, so I'm going to say working backwards. So uh, we see that plus or minus 2 plus or minus root 2 are all the conjugate. You check that if you don't believe me, you can check that all of these things are these are the four roots of this of this polynomial. And yeah, again, once we've done this 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 calculation to work out the conjugates, you just work backwards, work your way back up, adding plus or minuses every time you've taken a, a square or square root. If you did something similar, but instead of taking square roots, you've taken like cube roots or something, then you gotta put some random cube root of unity or, or something like this. Um but it somehow works oh, it works like this. Um, some non-examples. So things which aren't algebraic numbers. Uh, something like pi, you know, 3.1415, blah, 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 blah. E, I can't remember, it's like 2.17 something, um, are not algebraic numbers. Although, this is really hard to prove. This isn't something easy to prove. You actually have to do some, uh, yeah, think about it. How do you check that something doesn't satisfy a polynomial? How do you find, yeah. It, it might be hard to find, well, you're checking some condition that you, you have to take for every polynomial that, 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 right, that you can write down that out pi and e don't satisfy it. But this is a hard proof, but a hard thing to prove, but it's true. Um, okay, uh, with all this, now let me get to the, to the the different the term that we're going to see a lot. So here's a definition. This is the definition of what a number field is. Definition 1.4.6. A number field um, is a subfield. So for I'm going to just set this up from now on. We're going to assume all of our fields are contained in the complex numbers. No, we're not going to. We're going to ignore all philosophical issues of like. Um, what algebraic closure we've taken to comp to get the algebraic the, the complex numbers or so on. We're just going to take a for uh, assume that the complex numbers exist and all of our fields are going to live in some fixed copy of the complex numbers. Um, if you don't understand why I'm doing this, then don't worry about it. Uh, if you do understand about wh why I'm saying this, then again, don't worry about it. I'm just um, doing this. It makes no difference. So, number field is a subfield of of C of a finite degree. Degree uh, over Q. So some finite extension of Q. Example, well, here's the, the ones that we've we've seen. Uh, so I let, here's the most the, the most basic example of algebraic number fields of number fields that, that you'll see. So let uh, sometimes people call these algebraic number fields, but we're just gonna call them number fields. So I'm gonna let D be a square free integer. Uh, then q square root d, which I'll remind you as a set, this just looks like a plus b root d, such that a and b are in q. Um, so what it looks like as a set, but you can check that this is also a, a ring, it's actually a field. Um, this is a number field of uh, degree 2. Um, 
or with a rational number. Um, so it is, this is indeed the, the most example, most basic example of number field that, that we'll study. This is the, the first the most interesting example to, to study. Um, note that by the, let me just make a remark, we can get lots of number fields uh, very easily. So uh, note that by the uh, Fundamental theorem of algebra. Algebra. Um, any polynomial. Say f of x in qx um, has a root in c. Say alpha in the complex numbers. Therefore, Q alpha is a um, number field. So if you want to construct some random number field, what you do is you pick some random polynomial, pick a root of it, and then adjoin that to Q, and that gives you that's going to give you a number field. This, is a, this gives you a huge supply of number fields. Um, you don't have to take one. Similarly, you can take lots of them. You can take you know, alpha 1 to alpha n algebraic numbers and we get q alpha 1 alpha n um, is again a number field now something to be uh, careful about here is um, I've um, for starters I'm taking I'm only allowed to take algebraic numbers so they it can't be something like pi or, or e they have to be like roots of some polynomial, and I'm only allowed to take a finite number of them. Um, I've said by definition that my number field is a subfield of C of finite degree over Q. Um, so I'm only allowed to take a finite number of these things because if I took infinitely many, then you might get something of infinite, infinite degree. Um, but yes, these are going to be the objects that we're going to study in detail from the on. Most of our theorems are going to say that something like let like K over F be extension of number fields or, or something. Um, this is going to be our bread and butter for the whole course. So um, I'll, I'll leave this here and then we'll start studying um, number fields a bit more in detail in the next 